And my talk is now called the Audi Max. Here, now, we, in the Audi Max, the great auditorium of the University of Hamburg, here, now, we are turning education around. We here now are saying that our education, our learning, our teaching is part of the struggle of life against money, not part of the rule of money over life as universities usually are. We are going in the opposite direction and that is what these three days are about. But, that is what I wrote about a week ago before I heard of the decision of the awful, scandalous, contemptible decision of by the president of the university, Dr. Hauke Hekeren, acting on the advice of the Secret Service, the Verfassungsschutz, to exclude us from the Audi Max and the buildings of the university. And I had already decided to change my title to the Audi Max. So what a disappointment. I was actually very happy with the way I was starting. <laughs> and, and I was excited, excited about being in the Audi Max. I think for two reasons. Firstly, because I had the experience of speaking there in the conference eight years ago. And wow, now this lovely auditorium. But actually, it's also more than that. It's because I think I grew up with a romantic idea of German universities. Because... <laughs> because, in fact, I spent time at the universities in Tübingen, in Frankfurt, in Cologne, I was in love, I still am in love with Ernst Bloch, Theodor Adorno, Herbert Marcuse, and I was strongly influenced by friends like Joachim Hirsch, Elmer Altvater, Christel Neusus, Heide Gerstenberger, and many others. I had the idea of German universities as spaces of rigorous critical thought, or at least spaces where it was possible to develop critical rigorous thought. And now this, I suppose I feel it, I actually take it very personally. I feel, <laughs> I feel it like a slap in the face. I feel it like an affront that shatters my romantic illusions. No. How can an institution that bans, that expels three days of critical discussion, how can it call itself a university? How dare it? This ridiculous decision ruins for me, and I suppose for all of us, the reputation of the University of Hamburg, and by contagion, the reputation of the German university system. Shame on you, Dr. Haker, and you have...
you have betrayed the richness of your own tradition. <laughs> and now, and now how am I going to begin my talk? <laughs> so I've changed it slightly. It now begins here, now, we, expelled from the Audi Max, <laughs> expelled from the University of Hamburg. Here, now, we are turning education around. Here, now, we shout out to all the world the title of this conference. We want our world back, resist, reclaim, and rebuild, do autonomous education, and organize. And here, now, we, we all say clearly, fuck off, Dr. Hickerman. <laughs> Fuck off, Administrative Council of the University of Hamburg, and fuck off for fashion shoots. <laughs> we do not need you. We are doing it by ourselves. But there is more, I think, than that. Yes, we have left the university and come here, thanks to the magnificent organizers. No, we have... <laughs> we have come here to do autonomous education and the shameful decision by the university underlines the importance of that. But I think we have to do more because many of us who are here as teachers, as students, as parents or whatever, many of us are not entirely outside the universities or schools. We do not want just to talk about autonomous education, we also want to understand the universities and the schools that exist as places of struggle. We want our universities and our schools back. My friend Lars Stube has told me something about the struggles in the University of Hamburg and how the slogan generated here, Unter den Talaren muff von tausend Jahren, under the academic robes, the mold of a thousand years, became a central slogan for the student movement of the late 1960s. So within the universities, within the schools, there is a struggle all the time about how decisions are taken, but also and crucially about what we talk about and how we talk about it. Mostly, it is not a very spectacular struggle, but it is one that probably all of us are involved in, in some way or another in every class, in every seminar, in every time we write an essay, every time we speak. And this is a struggle, not just between people or groups of people, but I think it is a struggle over something much more important, much more urgent. It is the struggle between 
life and money. The university administration here has now openly declared that it is on the side of money against life. That's what I understand by their decision. And that this, as we know, is increasingly the tendency of universities and schools throughout the world, even if they do not declare it quite as brutally, quite as stupidly as the University of Hamburg. But for us, the struggle is the opposite. For us, the struggle is the struggle of life against money. Life against money was the, slogan, was the slogan of the wonderfully mad, the wonderfully insane, wonderfully mind-breaking Zapatista trip to Europe in 2021. And the argument is simple. We live in a world ruled by money. The rule of money is the rule of capital, the rule of profit. We have known for a long time that the rule of money causes enormous social suffering. Money shapes our access to the riches of the world. So if we think of the so-called so -called food crisis mentioned in various of the talks on Friday, in other words, this crisis now here in which the hunger, malnutrition, and starvation is now being felt not only in the poor world far away, but also here in Hamburg, here in Europe. We know obviously that this food crisis is not the result of a shortage of food, but simply the result of the fact that our relation to food is mediated through money. If money did not exist as a social relation, we would just go and take the food that we needed. It is not a food crisis, it is a money crisis. Thousands and thousands of people die each day for no other reason that then that money shapes the way we relate to one another. The way in which we act each day and the way in which we think about our lives and what we're going to do is shaped by the fact that our social relations are mediated by money. Mm -hmm. It is money that channels us into that peculiar ridiculous activity that we call labor. No, it is money that it channels us into dedicating our lives to an activity that we normally do not control, an activity which directly or indirectly is shaped by the need to generate the expansion of money, to generate the growth of profits. And it is money that creates poverty and extreme wealth. It is money that shapes the way we think, the categories we, we use. It is money and its insatiable need for expansion, for profit, that is destroying the world. And I think that, that last point is really what is new or at least new in its urgency, because we've long seen that money, the existence of money, the existence of money as a social relation causes enormous, enormous suffering. But it is really in the last 
20 or 30 years that it has, it has become clear how the rule of money, the rule of capital, that is, is a terrible dynamic of destruction that is threatening humanity with extinction and already causing the massive extinction of other forms of life. Money means ecocide, the theme of the first session. Money means multicide, the theme of the second session. Through global climate change, through the destruction of biodiversity and the consequent generation of pandemics, through the exhaustion of the water supply, the rule of money is pushing us deeper and deeper into catastrophe. Sorry, I need to get water. And I think um, it, it's kind of been a theme here all the time, I think, or at least one that I've been felt, felt feeling and that I've been learning from in the last couple of days. It's this, this, I, this I think that it, it is the rise of new struggles, no? the growing awareness of this dynamic of the destruction is leading to the emergence of new lines of social struggle less focused perhaps on the suffering caused by money and more on the threat to our future existence, as in the movement for climate justice that we heard about on the first day. And the danger, it seems to me, is sometimes that this connection is lost, that it, it is not seen that the struggle against exploitation and the struggle against global warming are just two faces of the same struggle against the rule of money. Can these problems, the problems of global warming, the problems that are threatening our survival, can they be solved within the context of a world ruled by money? Seems to me possibly, but it seems unlikely, just because the dynamic of destruction, the dynamic of destruction that the pursuit of profit that rules the world, what this means is probably that within that context, there is no possibility of a solution. So life against money Money against life is probably not an exaggeration. If we maintain the rule of money in this world, then it seems to me very likely that we are heading towards the extinction of the human species. And that means that we have only one scientific question left. How can we stop the rule of money from destroying human life completely? That is the one question that must inform our thinking about education at all stages. How do we stop the destructive dynamic that is money, that is capital? There's a scientific question an educational question, a political question. But I think it is a question, it's important to say it's a question, not an answer, partly because we don't have the answer, we don't actually know, we've got ideas, we have experiences, but we don't have an answer. And partly because it is important to think that the only way forward is actually through questions, not through answers. Preguntando caminamos, asking we walk, 
as the Zapatistas put it. And that is important because it takes us into a different understanding of education and of politics. If we have the answers, then obviously we must explain them to the masses, to, to the people who don't have the answers. No? Politics of answers is a hierarchical politics, a politics of monologue. But if we don't have the answers, then we must enter into a dialogue, into a conversation in which we say, well, this is what I think. What do you think? A sharing of ideas, a sharing of doubts, a sharing of confusions, a sharing of experiences, an experimenting, an overflowing, a pushing beyond with uncertain steps. And the politics of asking leaves us to other forms of organization that are anti-vertical, to assemblies, councils, communes, and not to the state. The state is a politics of answers. It takes us away, the politics of, of questions takes us away from the idea of taking power because the, because the power, our power, our power too, is already in the process of collective doing and collective thinking and collective discussing. Mm -hmm. The rule of money seeks to contain both acting and thinking. The rule of money seeks to channel are acting, are thinking within certain guidelines that are conducive to the production of profit and the production of a social order that respects the rule of money. And education from the perspective of money imposes definitions, limits, identities. Often, those limits are not obvious. We can say you, we can say or do whatever we want. As long as we respect the rule of money and the order necessary to support it. As the University of Hamburg has just reminded us, uh, has just reminded us of those limits with brutal stupidity. Education for life against money, on the other hand, cannot be an imposition of definitions, of limits, of identities. It starts simply by saying, no, 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 there is something wrong with the world. There is something wrong here. We cannot accept that anymore. Ya basta, enough. And the yabasta is a breaking of a barrier. It is the breaking of an identity. And at first, we may feel that we are on our own. And then we look around and we see that, no, no, we are not alone. That there is a whole history of struggle, a whole world of struggle, a whole history that André has just not been recounting to us a different way of thinking about education, a different way of thinking about the world, but also a whole world of struggle in many different shapes and sizes with shining lights like Rojava and the Zapatistas and Lutzerat or the uprising in France in the last few weeks or the Paran in Colombia two years ago, or the revolt in, in Chile in 2019, or indeed the great student strike in the National University of Mexico, what, 20 years ago, that effectively stopped the introduction of fees in the public universities in Mexico. And of course, sometimes this no it's a much less spectacular thing. It is simply P 
people trying to shape their lives in a way that goes against the rule of money. And sometimes it may just be a student standing up in a class and saying, shouldn't we be thinking about our subject in a different way, in a way that subverts the rule of money over life rather than strengthening it? And often we know these struggles are defeated or seem to be defeated, but the struggles of the past live on, demanding that we should pick them up, demanding that we should redeem them, make them ours. So in talking of education for life against money, it is important, of course it is important, to talk of the wonderful experiences of autonomous education. No, absolutely. But it is also important that we remember that we, or at least most of us here, I'm sure, still have a foot, or much more than a foot, trapped in the shit of the existing world. No? We live not only beyond, but also in and against the old world, and we must fight from where we are here, now, in every school, every university, every class, every time we talk, every time we write. Life. Thank you, Andre. So life against money, madness, 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 we know it. Are we not mad to fight against the rule of money when the money penetrates everything, when it seems impossible? that we can ever win? I think there are two answers. One answer is to say, yes, yes, of course we are mad. But then perhaps that madness is the meaning of life. No. The meaning of life is to fight against money. That is what the Zapatistas call dignity. It is the need we have to fight against what is wrong, the need we have to fight for life. But the second answer is, well, maybe we're not so mad after all. Maybe we're not so mad after all because we actually want more than dignity. We want to win. We want to win. We want to get rid of capital. We want to get rid of money. We have to win. And maybe we can win. This is the question of hope, obviously, that was coming up over and over again in the last two days of discussion. And for me, it helps to think of money or of capital as a channeling a channeling of our lives, a series of forms that seek to, to channel or try to channel our lives into subjection, into certain patterns that promote the accumulation of capital. That is what capital is. That is what money is. Money says to us, if you do not behave in a certain way, you will die of starvation, or at best, you will live a miserable life of poverty. That is money. But there is always at least a latent and sometimes an explosive resistance to that channeling. There is always an underlying rebellion that threatens to overflow 
the forms of capitalist domination are always under strain. And what makes it difficult for capital is that it is not like feudal lords or slave owners. It cannot just, the capitalist cannot just say, well, I'm a happy capitalist, I will live like my father who is a happy capitalist, no? <laughs> Capital actually, in order to reproduce itself, must keep on tightening the screws. It must keep on tightening its control over our behavior. It must constantly intensify the exploita exploitation of labor. And to do this, it must constantly tighten the subordination of all aspects of human and non-human life to the logic of the market, as Friederike was ex insisting in her t workshop yesterday, that is, to the logic of capital accumulation. And poor capitalists, this isn't easy. This isn't something that's easy to achieve. There is always a fear at the center of domination, a fear that we should never underestimate, a fear that they might lose control, that it may be, and this, it may, that we might overflow its channels, that we might say, no, we actually have other things that we want to do in our lives. No. Always, this here fear is hidden, and it may be that capital is pushed into a pretense, pushed into a fiction in order to secure at least the appearance of its own reproduction. And I think this is what has been happening over the last 40 years. In the center of this pretense, in the center of this fictitious existence has been the huge expansion of debt and now the resulting financial instability. But when we feel that we have no chance, when we feel that there is no hope, we really have to think the other way around and we have to try and see the world as well from the standpoint of the poor capitalists and their constant worry about, well, how do we, how do we increase our control over these millions and millions and millions of people? We have to see their fear. And now, the University of Hamburg our friend, Dr. Hauke Haker. <laughs> now, the University of Hamburg has shown that it too is under strain. It is an institutional form that seeks to contain thinking and discussion within a certain framework. And in this case, it has shown, it has declared openly that it is unable to do so. The violence of its reaction is a de declaration of its own weakness, a declaration of its fear of what we might be saying. <laughs> so the University of Hamburg, or at least its rector and its administrative council, is not only contemptible, it is ridiculous, laughable as well. And finally, 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 <laughs> I just want to end by saying a word of thanks to the Verfassungsschutz, to the Secret Service, for labeling us as extremists. Yes, of, of course we are extremists. We are extremely opposed to the rule of money. We are extremely opposed to the capitalist system that is destroying the world and pushing us 
in the direction of extinction. We are extremely committed to thinking and discussing and practicing ways forward towards a better world. That's what we're doing here. And we are extremely opposed to your attempts, Mr. Verfassenschutz, to limit what we can say and what we can think. We will not be contained. The fighting for the fountain of life against the cistern of money is extremism. Then we are extremists and proud of it. Thank you.